What's up guys, I'm Zach from Wire Customs and today I'm going to show you what parts you need to go from 6 volt positive ground to 12 volt negative ground. Doing a 12 volt conversion is great for a currently running car and it's also a really good addition to a car that you're restoring to go ahead and just upgrade it up to 12 volts. Um, I like to see 12 volts as more of a fail safe, something that's more beneficial in the long run. Now when you're considering a 12 volt conversion, I'm more thinking of uh, later on down the road after you've done conversions years later, uh, maybe the alternator goes bad or you have a bad battery, it's much easier to find a 12 volt battery or just a generic typical modern alternator would work great. Also in real life, maybe you forget and left your ignition on, you left the light on, a dome light on, you're at a car show, your battery's dead, it'd be a lot easier to find someone that'd be able to jump your ride with 12 volts. Now if you're going to be adding accessories to the car, like a nice radio with an amplifier, uh, more electrical accessories, let's say uh, power windows, a power wiper motor for the older cars, and even maybe some electrical performance parts, you need 12 volts. Doing a 12 volt conversion doesn't have to be complicated and on a running driving car it's actually a lot easier. I want to give a big shout out to Vintage Auto Garage for making a kit that you can just order and taking all the stress and complication out of ordering all these various parts that you're going to need. Right here in this box is everything that I need to go from 6 volt positive ground to 12 volt negative ground. So this is going to make this a breeze. Now let's go through the box and I'm going to show you what you need to make this conversion possible on your car. First, I want to show off my favorite part of the conversion kit. This big beautiful Power Master. Now, Vintage Auto Garage sells alternators or they can sell you this really great alternator that looks like a generator. Now personally, I think these are just gorgeous, especially on top of a flathead. Uh, big nice one wire alternator. All you have to do is hook up this positive to the battery positive and just put an inline fuse just to save your car. Um, but this is very very beautiful. They sell this by themselves on their site uh, and they also sell this as a part of the kit. And this awesome beautiful bracket. Um, for me I'm big on flatheads as you can tell. So I love this stuff that looks traditional but it's going to charge and do everything you need for a modern uh, 12 volt setup, modern radio, all that good stuff. Okay, so here we have a coil. Um, now it's really important the type of coil you get. The coils for a Petronix type setup and the coils for points are actually different. They have different ohm ratings. What I have here is a coil for Petronix. If you get it for Petronix, it can also do points. If you get it for points, it cannot do Petronix. Technically your car would start, but it wouldn't be getting all the juice that it actually can have. So what I like to do is just get the Petronix one. I'm running points right now. Later on, if I want to switch over to Petronix, I have nothing to worry about. This is ready to go. Then a nice little bracket to hold the coil. Something that may get overlooked. So what I have here is my two new battery cables. So we got our positive ground. Um, they're both black wires, but they're labeled with shrink wrap, which I like. So it makes the inside of the car look nice and clean. Now these are cut to length, so you need to make sure you measure your vehicle to make sure you get the right length. So all you have to do is just measure it, let them know, they'll make sure the right length is in your kit. What we have here is a new starter cable. Now the starter on a flathead can take 12 volts all day long. Um, it's not going to last as long, but we're, we're saying like, okay, if you had 6 volts on a starter, it lasts you 10 years. If you had 12 volts on a starter, it might last you 7 years. So technically it doesn't last as long, but a starter, a flathead starter will hold up to the 12 volts. We just want to make sure we can get the voltage there without burning the wire up. So this right here is going to keep us from doing that. Now here's something that's really nice. Um, what is a good kit without some good instructions? Now this is how to go from 6 volts to 12 volts. In the next video that I'm doing, I'm actually going to show you how we install all of this onto a fire truck. And what we have here is a basic guidance and manual. This shows you a lot of great information. Um, it's going to show you a couple wiring diagrams in the back, which I think is really important. How you should wire up your starter, how you should wire up your alternator, um, your ignition, 
all that kind of good stuff. And another really good resource inside this book is to show you which six volt bulbs that you had. So it has all the different part numbers for those bulbs. It has a conversion chart showing you what that six volt bulb is as a 12 volt bulb. So this is what you have, this is what you need now. So that's awesome. Make sure you pick up one of these books. Um, you can buy these books standalone. Uh, so pick one of these up, read through it before you get the kit. That'll really give you a lot of good information before you get started. So on my 12 volt conversion, I'm putting LEDs in the tail lights. So I got the LED flasher. The LED flasher is different from a normal bulb flasher. So make sure you get the right one for the setup that you have. And this is my little hookup for the flasher. Now the flasher hookup is the same for the LEDs and the standard. So make sure you pick one of these up. This is a lot nicer. It's not that expensive. And it gives you one connection instead of three spades right here in the bottom. So I, I always opt in for these. So I opted in for the heavy duty signal switch. Um, this is just gonna give me uh, left blinker, right blinker, hazards. If you, this, this is a really important thing to have. Um, it just easily goes onto the column. It fits all the columns that I've ever put them on. I've never had any issues with these not fitting. And it's very easy to wire up. So grab you one of these, make your car a little bit safer. Now, Vintage Auto Garage builds a lot of their stuff in-house, right here in America. I love grabbing their boxes and seeing the Made in the USA logo on them. Vintage Auto Garage, built in America. Something like that actually means a lot to me. So let's go through their specific home-built, American-built products that they got. So one thing that I really, really like from what they have, um, I use this on everything, this multi-gauge voltage reducer. I did a whole video just on this, so check that out. This is really important. So this is gonna give you input from the 12 volts, and it's gonna give you an output of six volts, so you can step down and protect all your gauges in just one item. You don't need to buy an individual piece for each gauge, so this makes the whole process that much easier. Here's another thing I really like from Vintage Auto Garage. So we're gonna open this up. This is the new starter relay. This is actually really important that you get a one that's gonna accept the 12 volts. So what we have here is a little jumper over here so we can switch this from the ground side. If you have a six volt positive ground, it's gonna be switching everything from the ground side. So this is going on an early 50s Ford pickup truck. So it's really great that this little jumper is right here and this is gonna take 12 volts and it's still gonna switch from the ground side. And it's still going to start the starter with a little push button on the dash. So that's really nice to have. So now we have the horn relay. Everything that's gonna be switching anything needs to be stepped up to 12 volts or we're gonna burn it up. This is just in and out. This is exactly the same uh, bolt in, exactly the same wire setup, but it's rated for 12 volts. We need to protect our system to make sure we don't burn anything down in this process. So now we have this fuse kit right here. This is gonna go in line with the alternator uh, wires. So this is gonna keep the alternator from ever shortening out. It's a 125 amp uh, fuse that's in this. We always wanna safeguard everything we do when it comes to electrical. This is gonna make it that much safer. Uh, if anything should happen, the wire melts on the exhaust, rubs, grounds out, starter starts going bad, battery goes bad, the alternator goes bad, but it's not going to burn the car down. So make sure you put this fuse in here. This makes it that much safer. So what we have here is alternator charge wire. You don't need to go out and buy some wire from the local store. Wonder what gauge wire you need. They have this in the kit. So you don't need to figure any of that out. They're gonna send you what you need. I opted in for some nice 12 volt headlights. Um, this is gonna make it brighter than what I have, but look like the original headlights. So that's nice. As you can tell here, I'm trying to go for an original look just modern wiring. So we only have a couple things left here. So we have wires to hook up your multi-gauge voltage reducer. Then we have a relay kit for the headlights. Like I said, anything that is switching voltage needs to be stepped up from 6 volt to 12 volts. So we have a 12 volt relay in this kit. Now one thing that's not in this kit is a battery. So they're not going to send you a battery uh, when you can go to a local parts store and save you a boatload on shipping. But what I have to say about batteries is whenever you're putting a new alternator on or a new starter relay, make sure it is fully charged. A fully charged battery is 12.6 volts, not 12.4, uh, not 12.2. And if it's 11.6, it is a dead battery. Okay, so make sure it's fully charged. Now, if you 
come in with a dead battery, a used battery, a battery that's been on shelf for a while that was new. Make sure you check it because if you don't, you could mess up the alternator starter relay. Make sure you check it. That's very important. Must be a fully charged battery. Uh, another thing to be said real quick is that the alternator is going to ground through the engine. So make sure the engine has a really good ground. If you need a ground, uh, you can actually ask for that and have that included into your kit. So you have to have a good ground on the motor. So this kit makes it way, way easier to do your conversion. Make sure you check out vintageautogarage.com. Also, look me up, Wired Customs LLC, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. I'd love to help you on your project. Let me know what you have. Submit any of your questions in the comments below. Thank you for watching.